Good afternoon, everyone. I will call this regular meeting of Council of the Municipality of Jasper to order for November 1st, 2022. It is 1.30 p.m. I want to begin by acknowledging and thanking Councillor Demota for his service as Deputy Mayor over the past two months. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a, an extensive agenda that he's had to manage on several occasions, so I, I thank Councillor Demota for that, and I, at the same time, welcome Councillor Hall back to the role of Deputy Mayor for now her second kick at that particular cap. Councillors, you have... That was a Halloween reference. <laughs> just, just in case that one I noticed. <laughs> Councillors, you have today's proposed agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or other changes to be made to the agenda? Councillor Waxer. Yes. On behalf of the HR committee, I'm wondering if we could add an in-camera session um, to discuss CAO evaluation. Thank you for that. Um, I would propose um, that that then might be added subject to council approval as agenda item 9.1, a closed session um, CAO performance evaluation, and I think the reference would be to section 24 of the Freedom of Information Protection of Privacy legislation. I'm not sure if there's a subsection, <clears throat> but section 24 probably specifically or nearly specifically covers it. Are there any other changes to be suggested to the agenda? I will presume then the suggestion by Councillor Waxer is a motion to add to today's agenda item number 9.1 a closed session dealing with CAO performance evaluation. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. And might I then have a motion from the Councillor to approve the agenda for today's meeting as amended? Councillor Wilson, thank you. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. We have three sets of minutes for approval today. Firstly, the minutes of the regular meeting of October 18th, 2022. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made to those minutes? Hearing none, I would invite a motion that council approve the minutes of the October 18, 2022 regular council meeting as presented. Council Waxer, thank you. All those in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. We also have for consideration the committee of the whole meeting minutes of October 25th, 2022. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made to those minutes? Seeing nothing, I would invite a motion that Council approve the minutes of the October 25th, 2022 Committee of the Whole meeting as presented. I think that's out of the corner of my eye. Councillor Demota first. <laughs> All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. And finally, we have the minutes of the organizational meeting of October 25th, 2022. Are there any errors, omissions, or Corrections required to be made to those minutes. I'm seeing no flurry of activity. I would welcome a motion that Council approve the minutes of the October 25th, 2022 organization meeting as presented. Councillor Melnick, thank you. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Agenda item four, we have one piece of correspondence on our agenda today, a letter from Mr. Holman, CAO of Parks Canada.
think primarily here just for information. Um, Mr. Given, do you want to give us any update on the status of, of matters that sure, are reflected in that uh, Absolutely. So uh, as you see, this is a response to Council's correspondence of July. Um, in the letter, uh, Mr. Paulman um, affirms that the Parks Canada is open to considering possibility of transfer of uh, land use planning and development authority to the municipality. Uh, administration has been engaged in policy level discussions uh, with park staff about that. Uh, we expect to be able to bring a scope of work uh, to council uh, to identify what you know what is in the bounds of that discussion and what is not. Um, in the next little while, um, parks have identified an internal resource on their part to uh, help advance those discussions. It has been um, uh, a challenge, uh, really just as a matter of resourcing, uh, but Parks has identified a dedicated resource to engage with the municipality on that. Um, I had a meeting with them as late as yesterday. Uh, and again, talking about defining that scope of work, um, bringing that uh, forward so council can see that. And uh, Parks has discussed potentially coming for an in-person meeting, uh, likely at the administrative level. Uh, but uh, before the end of the year, sometime in December. Uh, so those discussions are again at a policy level rather than an implementation level, but at a policy level are ongoing. And uh, we expect to be able to update council which, uh, probably in an in-camera uh, session uh, around process and scope in the future. Thank you for that, Mr. Gannon. That is the only matter of correspondence so far as I'm aware, I take it there has been nothing to come in um, since the agenda was published that should come to Council's attention. Councillor Wilson? Yeah, just a question. Um, forgive me if I, I can't remember his name, but our consultant regarding the issue of uh, transfer of land jurisdiction. Do um, you have an update with him? Yes, Your Worship. Um, for Councillor Wilson, um, the the uh, consultant was Albert Bootman uh, with Public Palace Planning. Uh, he's provided me with a preliminary report. We were just putting some attention touches on that last week. Um, and he expects to be able to bring that, I think, to one of our upcoming committees, uh, either the 8th um, or the fall. Uh, but the, recommend the preliminary recommendations will be reflected in such as, as well. Uh, but we do want to make sure to close the group of council up in the next report. Thank you for that. Yes, sure. go ahead, Councilor Wilson. Mayor Ellen, will you uh, uh, receive the, the letter and respond back? Uh, is, there, is that necessary to, to uh, respond and correspond? Well, that depends on the will of Council. I thought not. Um, the letter that is in our agenda today is a response to our letter from July. So. I'm not sure that we need to respond again, but it, it, it simply confirms where we stand, I think, which is the intent, or was the intent. All right, I will say that uh, agenda item four for response is complete. That will move to agenda item five delegations. We have no one scheduled, there is no one else in attendance, no one coming forward. So I will move to Agenda item six, new business, uh, 6.1, West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority amending agreement. That was before council sitting as committee of the whole, I guess a week ago. Um, and it's back now for a motion from council and approval or not. Um, Mr. Given, did you wish to speak to it at all? Uh, no, Your Worship, I did speak to it last week. Uh, I'll just say that I believe that all other municipalities have approved the amending agreement uh, and the inclusion of the MP of Greenview. Uh, and just as a reminder for Council, uh, the inclusion of Greenview is now because they have responsibility for the you know, former town of Grand Cash, uh, which was uh, disincorporated. Uh, that is now how it has been moved into Greenview. Um, and I believe all the other uh, perspectives were in the uh, report last week. Thank you for that. There is a recommendation coming forward from the Committee of the Whole. Is there a motion, Councilor Wilson? Uh, yes, uh, I would make a motion that uh, Council approve the meeting that is going to be a preview to the waste, uh, West Yellow Red Waste Management Authority 
And the council approved the West Elevated Regional Waste Management Authority amend agreement as presented. Thank you for that. Is there any debate required on the motion? The two part motion? If there is not, I will call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Agenda item 6.2 continuation of municipal services. Again, this was before us last week, sitting as committee of the whole, um, pertaining to snow clearing services. And in one case, okay, um, paper collection services uh, from the post office. And it comes to us with a recommendation from the committee of the whole. Any other updates required um, or any questions of administration with respect to the matter? Councillor DeMora? Well, um, after this uh, came up last week for discussion um, on two occasions, at least, uh, some members of the community had expressed that if we're going to do it for a couple of churches, why not all churches? And then uh, conversely, the opposite. So, um, you know, it was just, a, again, I think we discussed it briefly last week on, um, you know, why some and not others. Um, I did um, have a conversation uh, with uh, members of Parks Canada and um, we discuss the agreement, um, or there is a loose agreement about in the past of covering the um, clearing of the parking lot um, when it was initially built. And there is no specific documentation in a confirmation of that agreement. There's some correspondence that's gone back and forth, but nothing official is on paper. So. It was just kind of one of these things that was passed over to us that we continued on. So I thought I'd bring that board for information. I'm not sure if that helps. Thank you for that, Councillor Moya, Councillor Keller Hernan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I just feel concerned with the burden of the recommendation. I thought last week we had agreed we would go for the 2022-23 year because of the flowers for the Robson House in summer, and that we were going to really look at this in 2023-2024 budget because we all remember the that we happened in February. And if we just say to the winter season, that means that the Robson House is not going to be part of the service commitment that the nominee had in previous years. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Wilson? I'm just speaking to the intent. My motion, I think, was only for the winter clearing because uh, it's, it's immediate. You know, snow has already fallen. Um, I'm not sure I spoke to Lazard. Well, we could re we could review. I mean, you're not kind of I I my motion was uh, mainly to take care of immediate need, um, and I, I don't think I didn't uh, suggest that we carry this on um, into uh, future seasons. We have to. It it. it there's a conversation that needs to be had, and uh, it could be had before the summer, uh, this, the spring summer season. Thank you for that. Um, it's still open for debate, and I don't have a motion um, before us to debate. So I, I would look for that, unless there are discussion issues which should precede a motion and debate. I was really on the being sent because I raised this last week that uh, it was a major motion. And 
so that you said for the 2022 23 year with a meeting coming up to, for the following nature. But at that meeting, can't say I'm 100% sure, but in my memory, I'm about 95% sure you can change the motion right at the end for the upcoming season. And because I had raised that the stress on the chamber and the stress on the different churches, that it kind of wasn't fair, that and that we would move forward into 2023 and review it because I said that if we don't review this in January or February, then the flowers wouldn't be for for uh Robson House and there's a lot of pressure on the chamber, especially when that was of our making. Not actually at the chamber many years ago. And my understanding is that it kind of left it open to proceed for 2023. And that would have been a review of coming into next year. So I felt that this probably wouldn't get back to us before that is. Thank you for that. I, I will come back. Um, yeah, we'll read this one. But, but, but. That was probably appropriate at this time. Right. Yeah, just to respond, I, I, by all means, put the motion forward how, how we feel you'd like to see it. And then I most likely would support it. But I, yeah. Councilor DeVoto. Yeah, just in a minute. So we just grew from the last committee meeting that said that uh, Councilor Wilson uh, recommended the committee uh, recommend council approve maintaining current services for the Jasper Anglican Church, the Mother Church. Tourism Jasper, uh, the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce, and Canada Post for the 2023 winter season. And that's a uh, committee to recommendation to uh, sign agreements as required by policy at 104. So I think that might be the end of Sorry, could you repeat that last phrase? And that committee direct administration to enter into signed agreements as required by policy at one is four. Thank you for that. All right. Well, I I will say that I I recall the discussion to which um, Councillor Keller Carenti refers. I, I know that it did come up um, the the question of flowers in particular because that was one of the the larger components. Um, and respectfully, uh, this is an interesting discussion because it relates directly to a discussion that the Legislative Committee have had this morning about the importance of nailing down exactly what it is that we're voting on. So there is there is a record of what we did vote on, but there is an understanding uh, among councillors, perhaps, of having voted on something slightly different. So it is on all of us to work to be exacting in our motions. But that said, um, this is a recommendation coming forward from committee. Uh, we still need a motion to deal with at today's meeting. And um, I think we can make, anybody can make whatever motion they like to resolve the issue and we can then debate that. So just in reflecting on the recommendation that came from committee, um, which is a little different than what we see at 6.2 here today, um, omitting the direction of administration to get into the sign agreement. So I'm not sure if that was purposely left out or if that's just because committee had already directed administration there. And I'm not sure if it's a twofold scenario. I can get clarification on that. Maybe thank you. If I might, um, committee can make recommendations to council, but committee can also direct administration. So I think the reason that is not shown is that committee did give a direction. It doesn't have to come back to council to be confirmed or affirmed. So what is before council is a recommendation on part of it, but the direction. And I will turn to Ms. McGon because she had her hand up, or Mr. Gibbon. I presume that the direction is already um, underway, but 
I will let administration speak to that. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. I was going to suggest that the other motion was council direct administration and therefore it will show up on the motion action list, which is not part of the regular committee agenda, but will uh, return with uh, who it's assigned to in a timeline on the upcoming motion action list. Thank you for that, Councillor Dumont. Yeah, so I was just thinking in my head that we couldn't really give direction until decisions were made. Mm -hmm. Careful. We sit here still in the absence of a motion. So if somebody would like to make a motion. And Councillor ready, Wilson. Yeah, not ready to make a motion, just uh, clarifying uh, that the municipality of Jasper owns the Chamber of Commerce building. That's right. Not kind of the person that tours the Jasper building is owned by. Your Worship, uh, to my knowledge, that's correct. Obviously, uh, we don't own the Canterbury's building, we the um, Canterbury's Corporation. Uh, my understanding is that the uh, municipality is in management with the uh, just for Chamber of Commerce, uh, who is brought to know, so it is how is the, you know, the least of the And just to clarify, the services provided to Jordan Jasper is snow clearing as well as flowers, et cetera, or what is the, the services that are were provided to I know it was uh, brought to us last week. I can confirm that from the report last week in just a second. Uh, but I believe that that's correct. I think we also do some summer maintenance there as well. Uh, Your Worship, my apologies uh, for just taking that second to find that. Um, for tours and jazz, where we do do winter sidewalk maintenance, is what the report uh, listed in those limited. Thank you. Councillor Demota and then Councillor Kilhan. Yeah, just again about specifics in um, making motions and clarity. Are we to assume that the winter season ends on March 19th? As the spring equinox is technically <laughs> March 30th or, or 20th, or uh, you know, I just because we can usually say whenever we decide winter's over or when the snow is gone, I'm not sure. Well, just just to further complicate it, um, will winter not start again about November of 2023? <laughs> so, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, exactly. I, I get your point. Um, Mr. Gibbon, did you want to respond? And then I'm, I'm going to go to Councillor Calgary. Sure, your, your Worship, and I know that they might have access to it, but uh, in the uh, uh, staff report at committee last week, we had sort of broken apart the issues um, by the different types. So there's only one entity, kind of post that we pick up paper from, that's, you know, season is irrelevant to that. Um, and there's only one entity that we provide flower maintenance to, and that's the Chamber of Commerce. Again, that's a different type of season. So in the admin recommendations last week, we sort of separated them, you know, winter maintenance and, and entities that we do winter maintenance for, uh, which includes um, the churches that we've been discussing, uh, Tourism Jasper and Chamber of Commerce. Um, and then we had a separate recommendation with respect to uh, the grounds and, and flower maintenance for the Chamber of Commerce. And we had a separate recommendation around uh, the next paper can post. So Council might wish to, you know, when you're getting around to making motions, maybe you want to segment them by season. You know, if there's direction to administration to continue a set of winter maintenance services, maybe we should just list the properties that are specifically receiving winter maintenance services, um, because you may wish to deal with summer maintenance services differently, and you may want to deal with paper collection differently, uh, separately. Um, but those are contained in the report from last week, although in the administration <laughs> recommendation was that we should charge for all those services, which if council wishes to take a different direction, of course, that's your, your uh, prerogative. Thank you, uh, Councillor Calhoun. 
Um, the council uh, approved maintaining current service to the Jasper and Bickham Church, Jasper United Church, Tourism Jasper, Jasper Chamber of Commons, and Post Office. From November of 2022 to October of 2023, an end of administration entry into one year agreements as required by policy M 104. Thank you for the clarity of that motion. You wrote it down. When I when I state the question, I'll do my best to uh, to capture all of what you said. Uh, so that is the motion. Do you wish to speak first to the motion? All of these properties and churches, um, we have done this maintenance for many many years, and to suddenly decide that. We're going to end it at the end of this winter season. I think, you know, if we don't get into the agreements and we have that snowball next October, they'll cut it. Then, as we go forward in the year, we know as a council that this has to come back to the committee of the whole. We have to discuss it going forward into the 2023 budget and decide whether, as council was since last year, should we consider clearing site notes. For the whole town or not like it's something that I think that we really need to look at. Maybe it's something we look like when we go to the next track. Thank you for that. Debate on motion, Councillor Demota. Well, um, I appreciate that. And you know, just I know that committee the whole is where we kind of I use the term spitball or you know, discuss our priorities for certain services that we provide. Um, I do we did discuss it briefly at the last committee of the whole, and I would like to entertain a, a conversation or a broader discussion with the with Canada Post. And I realized that it was brought up in the community as a concern at the time. Um, but here we are, we're covering for, you know, the collection of the paper waste that, that goes there to for recycling. Um, and then, yeah, we still have to process and go through all that uh, additional service and I'm going to do all that. Maybe that money is incorporated into, into the cost of providing that service, but um, I'm not sure if it's in the best interest of the community to be um, helping service a uh, federal entity that you should probably be taking care of that. And I'm wondering if there's a precedent set in other communities. So um, I'm a little apprehensive on continuing with that program uh, using taxpayer dollars in the future. And I, I fully support the motion because there isn't a lot of time to, to rectify that for this year and probably this budget um, period. However, uh, it's definitely worth um, looking into. So I just wanted to make that as a point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kamala. Other debate? Councillor Wilson? Yeah, I, I would be in support of the motion um, with uh, the idea that we're going to have a more open conversation on services we provide for uh, at, at zero cost to w w whichever entities. And that could almost include uh, uh, cardboard pickup because last term uh, there was quite a large conversation about uh, commercial cardboard pickup. And um, so, anyway, it's not a conversation to be had here, uh, although I, I don't support carrying on offering services for free to certain entities and not others, but I also don't support uh, charging for it because I don't want to get into the, the mix of competing with the uh, private business. So uh, I'm in support of carrying on the services for this uh, year, yet we it's clear that we have to have a conversation, um, a large conversation, and I hope that this, I guess, is clear to the administration. Thank you, Pastor Wilson. Any other debate? I will speak um, in favor of the motion. Um, the churches are a bit of a standalone, and from what has been presented to council, um, it's all shrouded in the mist of time, but it seems like there was some sort of an arrangement made uh, with the churches by our predecessor and delivered the service. 
and it seems to me to be unfair, at least at this juncture, to put that burden back on those particular churches. With respect to the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce, I see a difference there in that we are the landlord. It, it is our lease and There are different considerations about what a landlord does for its own tenant and its own property. With respect to tourism Jasper, I'm not entirely sure who actually owns the Jackman House, but I believe that it could be Parks Canada and potentially the services that we provide to that property fall under the general agreement that we have with Parks Canada. And so maybe they're paid for already. I see a, a shake of the head from Mr. Gibbons, so I might be wrong on that, but it, I'm not sure that although Tourism Jasper is the, the occupier, I'm not sure that they're the least one. It's a, it's a question that maybe would have to be answered down the road. So I, I am supportive um, and I like the, the wording um, from November 22nd until, or, pardon me, November of 2022 until October of 2023. Um, with the direction as a secondary part of the motion to have administration to enter into one year contracts with those entities, but that will at least clarify things. As I say, I will support the motion. I think that I would prefer that we leave today's discussion with another motion after this, and that is some direction which we'll get on the motion action list that forces this back to council's table at some point, because otherwise we'll be back here this time next year, dealing with the same thing all over again. So I won't require or even suggest that council Calhoun empty add to her motion at this time, but I will invite another motion that ensures that we come back to this issue before um, whatever the next season might be. Is there any other debate on the motion? Right, with assistance, if necessary, from Councillor Kelleherenthi, I will state the question, and then I will call the question. That Council approve maintaining current services for the Jasper Anglican Church, Jasper United Church, Tourism Jasper, Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce, and Canada Post for the period November 2022 until October 2023, and that Council direct administration to enter into one-year contracts for those services to those entities. Is that close enough to it? Okay. Does everybody understand the motion upon which I will call the question? All right, I will then call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. Now to get this back before council in some sort of timely fashion, uh, is anybody interested in a, in a motion that would direct administration to return this matter to a future agenda? I don't have one more on my right hand, but if I may, I just want to, to commend administration for, you know, addressing gaps um, and, you know, and, and encouraging for the summer season, uh, for, you know, the change of season. I understand the flowers and stuff take, take place in the spring, but um, I think it's very helpful to council, especially when it comes to budget, budget consideration. And again, you know, using taxpayers' dollars for, for services uh, beyond what uh, we're asked to require, well, uh, beyond what we're required here. So, um, you know, I, I would like to encourage this this movement towards addressing um, gaps of in service or uh, service creep, as some had mentioned. Thank you. If there is not a further motion, I can well, <laughs> There will be, Councillor Keller. Um, the council uh, 
that my that my uh, administration um, direct administration during the continuation of municipal services and um, back to a committee of whole of the whole in late spring of 2022. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kellerhardy. Did you qualify spring? Did you say late spring? Uh, so, uh, Mid April. This uh, first mid April. Uh, I just want to make sure that we understand the discussion topic. As I understood the motion, it is that council direct the administration to bring the matter of the continuation of municipal services back to committee of the whole, the first meeting of April 2023. Councilor Wilson. I, I think I support the motion. I, I just wanted to clarify that um, it's not uh, restricted to the items that are um, stated here, like. So the continuation of municipal services is what we're discussing currently, but I, I think we're giving the administration uh, the time to uncover, discover other uh, services that are offered that, you know, service creep, et cetera, um, that we, we can have the, a larger conversation on, not just these four or five different items. I will direct a question to administration and depending on the response, perhaps I'll make a suggestion for a friendly amendment. But would it be more directed if the motion was to read something that bring the matter of the provision of non-standard services back rather than there might be other non-standard services out there that that could be reviewed. I, I'm just fishing for something other than the continuation of municipal services, because in a general sense, we're not going to question the continuation of most municipal services. It's just a few non-standard ones that seem to be the issue. Um, so just say this good conversation. So we're all being very specific. So we all come back to the table with an understanding of what is really important. I think that's great. Um, and I would say, Your Worship, non-standard services of what type? <laughs> so, as, so what I think Council is discussing here is the uh, provision of uh, uh, provision of services to private properties at no cost. Is, is that what Council is discussing here? Because I mean, we are picking up. In the case of Canada Post, you're picking up something from their private property at no cost to them. Uh, in the other, you know, we're planting flowers at no cost to some entity, uh, and we're shoveling sidewalks uh, in front of other properties at no cost to them. Uh, and we're not doing that for other private properties. Uh, so maybe that's what it is. When you say non standard services, there's a whole range of services being disqualified. That have nothing to do with ground maintenance, like the category of service with property. Um, that might be more helpful. I guess, you know, if the council was asked this direction to administration is examine, um, you know, look for more of these. This is, you know, areas where municipality provides service with private property. Um, yeah, that's certainly something administration do. I don't know if we'll find that many more beyond what Mr. Reed had identified in his report. So I think he did a bit of that scrub because this council of this was initiated by a request from one property where we did discontinue the service. And then we did a more holistic review and said, oh, let's take a look at all the other any other instances of this. So there 
means, at least some of them, but I believe that Mr. Great that did that sort of first analysis to say, okay, you know, what, what can we find where we're doing this? Um, what we're not going to make others. So I don't know that we've really come back with anything significant in the overall. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Given. Councilor Bell. Well, again, um, you know, discovering that maybe the Jackman House, like, and this is just for point of clarity here, um, be owned by Parks Canada, and we've got the payments and move taxes and such like that. Um, there could be opportunities where we might be providing services to Parks Canada, which may or may not be considered a private entity. Um, that we're not really gaining anything back from. So that could be worth a review as well. I'm sure there's some out there, maybe some that aren't identified, or maybe just some that we just keep assuming because that's what we've done. Potentially, I suppose that there might be, but on the other hand, we do have a contract to provide at least snow removal and probably some groundworks to Athabasca Park and, and the house next door. Yeah. And that, that is for material related matters. And it's a contract for which they pay. So it's mm -hmm. not, as Mr. Given indicated, um, a suggested wording change would be that council direct administration to bring the matter of the provision of services at no cost to private leaseholds back to Committee of the Whole, first meeting of April 2023. So if it's at no cost, that's that's the differential that we're working on. So if we're providing services that somebody's paying for, well, that's different. And I'm quite intrigued at how you record all that so quickly. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions for discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Mel. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor, and I think the discussion has been healthy and helpful for administration. I speak in support of the motion, um, as there are, uh, and I'm sure administration will discover um, each property based on ownership, leasehold, um, may have unique circumstances requiring that individual um, understanding with each entity. Um, and as we move forward, we have a new um, facility going in in the center of town, which will require a significant, significant amount of snow removal in the um, uh, new park that's being built. And it might be worthwhile at this point to have that in their uh, investigation of, of whose responsibility that will be. Thank you for that. Um, Councilor Mel, Saw a nod from you, but for the record, do you accept the change of wording to the provision of services to private leaseholders at no cost as a friendly amendment to your motion? Thank you for that. I think we're still at discussion. I'm not sure if I read the motion or not, but I, I will formally um, state the motion, and that is that. Council direct administration to bring the matter of the provision of services at no cost to private leaseholds back to Committee of the Whole at the first Committee of the Whole meeting in April 2023. We're all clear on question and ready for the question. And we'll call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. And I would suggest, um, subject to correction from council, that there is probably not a great deal more work that is expected of administration on this matter. Um, it's simply a, a placeholder so that council doesn't lose track of the fact that we want to get back to this and we're prepared to do that in, in April. All right, thank you. That was a, a great segue from this morning's session. <laughs>
takes us to agenda item seven, notices of motion. There is nothing. Um, just to be reminded that a counselor wants a notice of motion on an agenda. There is a way to do that. Uh, agenda item eight, counselor reports. Councillor Hall. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. I had a pretty busy week, so I don't want to pop it in. Um, last Wednesday, I attended the environmental uh, community conversation, which is great. I find that one's lots of conversation, lots of residents are in attendance. Um, at the end of the meeting, there was a very specific request from one resident directed to the mayor requesting a formal invitation to uh, Representative First Canada to attend the environmental conversation. I can stop there and continue on after you address it or if you want me to. Okay. Um, the, that evening, I attended a library board meeting uh, which in which Director Reed was in attendance, which was really nice to have him there. And today, everyone, until 7 p.m. at the elementary school library is the Scholastic Book Fair. So if you have children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews, I encourage you to head up there. I volunteered this morning for an hour. And there's some great books and things. Um, the next evening, Thursday, I was uh, the 48th annual Alberta Foster and Kinship Association held their uh, It's All About Kids conference, and I was honored to be there to welcome the attendees to Jasper, which is lovely. Uh, kinship and foster caregivers give up a lot of their day so that children have a safe, safe space, and it's a stressful job, and I just hope they were able to relax, rejuvenate, recharge, get up some sales downtown, and some coffee. But it was a really lovely evening. And this morning, uh, Councilor Demota, Mayor Ireland, and I had a legislative legislative committee meeting, which we referenced a lot today in this meeting. Um, we spent a good portion of our time reviewing the procedure bylaw, which has now been sent back to admin for some changes that will come back to council. But I encourage my council colleagues um, to think about what you might want us to look at next, and then we can that could be something we discuss at our our staff planning sessions. And that is all for me. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Hall. Before I turn to other councillors for reports, <clears throat> I'll just go back to the opening comment from Councillor Hall so at the Environmental Responsibility Community Conversation. A member of the public made a specific request that the mayor specifically invite the superintendent or Parks Canada? Uh, Parks Canada representation. Uh, <clears throat> I appreciate the, the interest of the, of the community member in that. Um, we get previous meeting, perhaps at the organization meeting, I suggested that it would be an opportune time um, now having one year experience under our belt for council to take a look at the role of community conversations generally. And this touches on one of the issues that I think we have not sufficiently nailed down. So if we have a community conversation and one individual makes one point, is that a direction? Is it a suggestion? How does that tie into what we receive and what we act on from any particular community conversation. And so we have relied, I think, on um, our own community development department to give us some guidance with respect to what comes out of community conversations. And I'm not sure that this matches that process. Um, but on the other hand, the process perhaps is somewhat unclear to those that we've invited. Uh, for the record, um, all residents of Jasper are welcome to participate in all community conversations and individuals representing agencies or organizations that serve the community are also welcome to attend in that representative capacity. And I would be happy to clarify to Parks Canada generally that that applies to membership in all community conversations. Um, but to take a comment from one in respect to an individualized community conversation seems to be to take us further from what we have envisioned when we 
algorithm to do. So I, I think um, you can't say all they're raising that, and I thank the community member, and I will generally send an invitation to the superintendent just to make him aware that Parks Canada would be a welcome participant at any and all of our community conversations. Other reports? Councilor Nelson. Thank you, Your Worship. Again, busy as well. Um, I attended my first Community Futures West Yellowhead meeting on Thursday of last week. And of course, later this week, we have a utility workshop as well as attending the Ambassadors Awards on November 4th. Um, there is another upcoming event, which I hope to attend, which is not on the list as yet, um, but I could wait until that point. Um, or bring it up now, the Community Culture Night. Um, we don't have a certain upcoming event, and that recently was announced, um, but I do hope to attend that on Saturday of this week. Thank you, Councillor Mel. Any other reports? Councillor Mel. I also attended the community teachers, uh, the first one for this portion of the term, which I was grateful to be uh, reappointed to. So thank you for that. Um, so to put it briefly, some of the things that were discussed is that um, there are a lot of, even though the, the government of Canada has extended the SEBA loan, so that's the uh, the Canada Emergency Business Account. Um, there could be up to 10,000 Alberta small businesses that are phase two immediate repayment because the CRA has recently deemed that a lot of these businesses didn't initially qualify. So they did get money. So uh, between 40 and $60,000 would be repayable, even though there's an extension on the deadline. So there's a, there's a lot of stress and, and you can even from the discussion at the board level, how concerning that might be to, to people in their own communities. Um, on a lighter, more pleasant note, out of all the, uh, the lemonade competitions that went uh, throughout our communities, a grade seven student from Edson became the second runner up in North America for lemonade. Day. So, congratulate her on her entrepreneurial ability. So, that was great. Um, one thing that came up uh, in discussion uh, as well was um, our fire situation, the Chetman fire, and um, there was a counselor on a, on a in a neighboring community that was uh, part of the um, ECC, I believe, in um, Fort Mac as well as Slave Lake, and um, the reason this came up was because there was a concern from uh, business members in the in the community that that have uh, benefited from uh, community futures that address that um, we had a gap in addressing small business during the information that went out um, to some of the businesses and and that was brought forward by some people that came forward um, to council and uh, this person said that you know what often gets left out is a business continue continuity response plan and something that we should if it's not implemented now uh just to be considered uh because uh 42 percent of businesses were shut down and 60 percent in slave lake uh, after their um their big fires there so something to consider for the future and that was just brought up and i said that i would i would bring that forward so um, economic development is the fourth major step and important part of uh, the delivery when it comes down to response. So I uh, shared that and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Pastor Dakota. Any other reports? All right, if not, uh, agenda item nine upcoming events. Friday this week. The Ambassador of Business Awards Gala at Forest Park Hotel. No stone left alone. Um, all councillors are, of course, invited for that. But the local cemetery at 10.30 a.m., November 7th. Not on the list, but worth mentioning, my understanding is that November 8th, 
is recognized as Indigenous Remembrance Day. Um, so something to keep in mind. Uh, Remembrance Day, formally November 11th, there is a Legion Mescal dinner at the Royal Canadian Legion on November 12th. I think all councillors have been invited. We begin budget presentations in two weeks. A day will be daytime events this year. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce has its monthly meeting November 16. Um, I take it that's at 7.30 a.m. It starts in the next slide. NETMA is November 23rd and it's at Martin Basin. And I will take this opportunity to advise that Mr. Given and I um, have accepted an invitation to travel to Ottawa that particular week. Um, it is in connection with the Tourism Industry of Canada Convention of Tourism Jasper. Um, desired municipal representation um, at that event, and we will organize some meetings with federal politicians we anticipate and potentially with uh, the CAO or Vice President, perhaps, of, uh, of Parks Canada. So we will be absent that particular week from the community. And the annual Community Christmas party is scheduled again for December 16th. Are there any other events upcoming uh, not on the list of which councillors should be aware? I think the uh, Chamber of Commerce Christmas party is first, the second, second of December, the first Friday in December. All right, if there is nothing else, we can move to agenda item 9.1, which was added. Um, that will be a closed session matter, and I will require a motion to move in camera. Councillor Waxer has a motion that we move in camera at 2.27 p.m. All those in favor? There are none opposed. Um, before we break, I will just advise members of the public who might be watching that it is extremely unlikely that council will do any business when it resumes open session other than to adjourn. So if the rest of you wish to adjourn now um, to your days and other activities, you're welcome to do that. Thank you for joining us for the last hour or so. And we are now into closed session. <laughs>